Hi guys, I'll be bringing you the meditation for today, and I'm actually going into this bit blind because this is not what I plan to record. Originally I was going to do some follow-up from Jeff's last session, maybe say a little bit more about The Insanity of God, which was a film we showed both Sunday night and a book that I started reading last week. But for some reason, in the middle of the night, I felt I was told to play Bible Roulette. Now, some people don't find that way of studying scripture very effective, that maybe it puts a little bit too much presumption and reliance on the Spirit to show us exactly where the Father wants us to study. But that's what I felt, so that's what I did. Now, basically, Bible roulette means you take your Bible and you flap it open to some place, and you could close your eyes and point to something, or you could feel it out, or just look at the first thing that you see. And whatever that is, you presume that that is exactly what the Spirit wants you to read today that there's something in that passage that the Lord wants you to see. Some people do this when they're seeking answers. Today, I just wanted to see something that was in there. Now, coming off of Pastor Len's message about the power of hope, I've been thinking a lot about where our hope and faith resides as a church, about where my hope and faith resides as an individual. And for a long while now, I've been feeling like we haven't studied the Gospels enough. We've been studying quite a bit through the Old Testament. We've been learning a lot about who God is, how God has revealed himself, our Sunday messages seem to mostly reside in the Old Testament, as well as my Friday devotionals. But sometimes I think we just don't get enough Jesus. The life of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, the teachings, the wisdom, the encouragement, the hope and the grace, the mercy and the salvation. So for doing Bible Roulette, I did decide that I was going to open it up to somewhere in the Gospels. Now, I didn't know exactly how to flop it open to the Gospels, so I found the very first section of the New Testament, and I just laid my hands over the words and closed my eyes and prayed and tried to feel out when I should stop. In my head, I knew I was in the book of Matthew, and I thought, well, maybe I'll go to Luke. And I thought, no, I will let the Spirit tell me where I'm going. I felt my fingers flip over multiple pages, knowing there was nothing there. And as I got down to one little section, I hesitated and I was about to move on. But I thought, no, this is the part. There's something right here. And I open my eyes and I look down and I see a prophet without honor. I see that I'm in the middle of all these parables in chapter 13 and I think, oh good, it's a parable. And I realized, no, it's just after Jesus finished telling these parables. And I didn't read very much beyond this little section. It starts in verse 53 and there's only five verses, but let me share them with you. When Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown and in his own house is a prophet without honor. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. At first, I didn't see the Spirit's point of making me read this passage. It seemed like kind of a downer, or maybe a few five verses set aside in between parables and John the Baptist being beheaded, until I got to that last line. He did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. That Jesus could go across land after land, healing and doing and teaching and guiding but the people in his own home, place where he was from, had the littlest faith in what he could do. All across the land, people were saying, Jesus from Nazareth, our Savior is from Nazareth. But even the Nazarenes are saying, how is it you can do this? And Jesus didn't reward them. Now, when I try to compare that to present day, I can think of the church like Jesus' hometown, where we all know him. We've even seen the things that he can do. But because we've developed a relationship with him, we tend to forget that he's special. Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was God. And our relationship to him is nothing short of miraculous. But when we see these miracles in our everyday lives, we're not giving Jesus the credit for them. When we wake up and take a breath in the morning, are we thanking and praising the Lord? When we pray fervently and someone is healed or a physical or medical condition lessens, do we immediately recognize that as the work of the Lord? 
When Pastor Len was talking about the power of hope, I wondered how many of us in the pews were sitting in despair. Without hope, we fall into sadness. We lose touch with God's promises. So if we think we're absent of this promise, then we feel absent of a future. We need to remember who Jesus is. We need to remember the almighty power of God. Because if we lose our hope, if we let our faith weaken, if we forget who it is that we serve and love and worship, Jesus, the Son of God, God incarnate, then less miraculous things are going to take places in our lives. He did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Pray for the Lord to increase your faith. Pray for each other to have an abundance of hope that through our suffering we persevere, that through our perseverance we build our character, and that with that character we have a renewal of hope and a powerful and steadfast faith. Thank you guys. Have a blessed rest of your week.